Hi, this is Tom Arbor, and welcome to Hinchback Tortoise Central. If you love turtles and tortoises, and you want to follow us along on our journey as we raise and grow up baby hinchback tortoises, please consider subscribing. Thank you. And today, what we're gonna do is take a look at the Western Hinchback Tortoise enclosures that I have. And I'm doing this because Jeremy Thompson mentioned that we should do a comparison of the Western Hinchback Tortoise enclosure versus the Holmes Hinchback Tortoise enclosure, which I did a couple weeks ago. So there's a quick look at the Holmes Hinchback Tortoise enclosure, and then we'll move on to the Western Hinchback enclosure. So what is different? Well, there are a couple different things. It's subtle, but what I'm trying to do is replicate the different habitats of these two different tortoises. And in this enclosure, I actually have soil and I have leaf litter. So while the western hinchback tortoises can live in the forest, they are not going to live in a such a wet wetland habitat like the Holmes hinchback tortoises might live in. So therefore, I have soil, and that soil holds some humidity, but it doesn't need to hold as much humidity as the other tortoises. And one of the other big differences is the lighting. So as you can see here, I definitely have a dark and a light side, light on the right, darker on the left with lots of hiding areas. However, I use a mercury vapor bulb for both light and heat. I cannot tell you how important this tool, this heat temperature gun is for my hinge back care. Every reptile keeper should have one of these heat guns or temp guns. This is the E-Tech City brand. You can get it on Amazon for under $15. And what this allows us to do is take an infrared temperature reading of any spot, including the animal and the substrate. So you know what temperature those animals are experiencing. So underneath this heating area, it's about 85 degrees on the edge. And then right in the middle, it's about 90 degrees. Can you see that? So it's 95 degrees right in the heat spot. And so what I see, my Western Hinchback Tortoise, each morning, she crawls out from the hide, goes to that spot, heats up until she's about 90 to 92 degrees, and then she retreats, goes back in her hide, and spends the rest of the day in, in hiding over in this area of the enclosure. So that is very, very different from the Holmes hingebacks, which their temperature underneath the heating element is only about 75 degrees. So I keep the Holmes hingebacks significantly cooler. Now that doesn't mean the Westerns have a cool side, they definitely do. Over here, you can see it's much cooler. It's only 68 degrees on the other side of the enclosure. So I have a nice gradient from about 68 to 70, all, uh, and then, you know, mid 70s in this area, all the way up to a small zone of approximately 95 degrees. And so that's what I do for my Western Hinchback female. However, I'm not consistent. I did it differently with the second female Western Hinchback. So I like to experiment and I like to do things differently. And so I've got this one set up a little differently. Here I have a coil UVB bulb from Zoomed. That is a 23 watt 10.0 bulb. And then for heat, I actually have heat emitters. So let's temp gun the temperature of the substrate underneath the heat emitters. So we've got about 85 degrees. So 85 degrees is almost 10 degrees cooler than the other tortoise. And quite frankly, I don't really see a difference between the health of the tortoises, between the MVB setup and the compact fluorescent setup with the heat emitters. What I do like about the mercury bulb is that it's a one 
bulb solution. Over here, I have three things that are sucking up power, and then over here, I only have one thing that sucks up power. So that's what I like about it. I didn't go that way just because I had some heat emitters. So it was easier and cheaper for me to just add a coil UVB bulb. But in the end, I'm not seeing all that much difference. Both tortoises are happy, both tortoises are healthy, both tortoises are laying a lot of eggs, and I'm pretty happy. Finally, there's one difference that I'm implementing. Over here, I have cocoa fiber. Over here, soil. Why did I go with the cocoa fiber? That is simply because the cocoa fiber is much, much easier to root and dig through when you're looking for tortoise eggs, and the cocoa fiber does not stain the tortoise eggs like the soil does. That makes it much, much easier to clean the eggs and have a very clear white egg to put in the incubator, and that very, very much helps out with handling the egg as that egg is growing and maturing over time. Oh yeah, and there's one more difference. With the Western Hingeback tortoises, I use the chicken watering devices that are designed for baby chicks. That practice is right in the conservation blueprint by Dave Mifsud, and the tortoises really like these, and they're very easy to use, and so I give those tortoises a once per week soak so that they can um, replicate a rainfall event. Yeah, guys, that's how I use the 110 gallon Tough Stuff tubs to house the Western Hinchback tortoises. You can see I'm doing it differently, but I'm getting very similar results. And bottom line, there's lots of different ways to set up turtles and tortoises. You just have to find what works for you. Thanks for watching. Go Hingeback Tortoises, and I will see you next time.